right, I thought we'd talk about the schematics uh, circuit design for the uh, for the K-Pro. Um, and I'm going to be talking mostly about the uh, the universal board, all right? And uh, these small schematics here, I'll, I'll change schematics, but uh, you can find th there's a whole bunch of um, technical manuals for the K-Pros. And this is a schematic I'm going to be talking about. Um, it is for the K-Pro 2X, the 4, the 10, the Robbie. They all use the universal board, all right? <clears throat> and while these are great schematics, there's uh, multiple pages. One page is for the processor schematic, one page for the RAM, one page for the flop. Anyway, multiple pages, right? But somewhere else, and these are, these are the official schematics too from Nonlinear Systems who designed the K-Pro. Somewhere along the line, somebody at K-Pro um, uh, was it K-Pro? Microcornopia. Maybe it wasn't even K-Pro. Maybe somebody else drew this. Yeah, I think Microcornopia did some ROMs and stuff. So anyway, uh, we're going to be using this set of schematics because it's all on, it's all on one page. So let me rearrange things. All right, this is a little bit hard to film all on one big page, but I'll zoom in on each section. But just a general overview of what's going on here. Uh, the, the Z80 is over here. Uh, here's the RAM. Here's a, a RAM controller for the refresh for the dynamic RAM. Uh, people are usually used to static RAM these days. So back in the day, you had dynamic RAM. And every two milliseconds, you had to go around and around and around to keep it refreshed. Uh, this is the boot ROM. Uh, this is the video section. This is the uh, video controller chip here um, and some character generation ROMs and stuff. There's some glue logic. <clears throat> then over here is the uh, um, floppy disk controller. Uh, down below we've got uh, some parallel I.O. And over here we've got modem. And over here we've got real-time clock. And then we've got a bunch of serial ports over here. All right, so let's go through each. Let's go through each section. Um, now, uh, what I've done is I've put in a kind of pink color the the connectors on the board. So all the connectors. So you have a, a reset uh, button. You've got the power coming in. You've got a video going out. A floppy disk. Uh, interface that is split in half. Part of it's over here and uh, part of it's down here. All right. So uh, floppy. This is the uh, on a like a K-Pro 10. This is the uh, hard drive interface. Uh, I don't have that on mine. Hard drive interface. Uh, and then we have serial ports. Uh, we've got uh, the keyboard is the serial. There's a serial uh, going in here, and there's a serial, another serial. So the connectors on the back are this one and this one, and then there's the keyboard and the modem um, down below. Sorry, uh, the keyboard, a serial printer is a connector. This is a data connector. Those are the two big 25 pins on the back, and then the modem uh, goes and uses the one of the SIOs, and the keyboard is a connector on the back, and it goes in there. Okay, so. Um, and then over here we have a Centronics port, which comes off of these two chips, input, output. And then a little bit of the floppy disk is over here, a little bit of parallel interface for selecting drive A as the motor on, things like that. All right. The other thing I've done on the board is in orange, I have put in chip selects. So let's talk about that right now. So the, the, um, the Z80 um, has uh, 8 bits of data and 16 bits of address. And it can either talk to memory or it can talk to an I.O. device. And when it's talking to memory, it just uses the address lines and that all happens. But if it's talking to an I.O. device, it's like which I.O. device? And so down here is what's called uh, address decoding. And so some of the address lines come in here, A2 through A7 come in here, and then they get uh, uh, broken into individual lines. And so right at the bottom here, we have a bunch of things. So uh, there's different ports that you talk to. So when you do an, a, a port write, you're going to be talking to a port. There's 256 ports in a system like this, uh, potentially. 
Uh, we have baud A, baud rate A. There's a baud rate uh, B here. There's a, a SIO chip select for IO1 and it's uh, SIO2. Uh, there's a system port, which are these parallel ports here. Uh, uh, printer data, uh, video chip select, uh, PIO, parallel port chip select, and then a real-time clock chip select. So these are chip selects, and those go into different address spaces, okay? And then as they're used, uh, like here's the, the uh, printer data, uh, goes into that, uh, that chip there. And like over here, we've got baud rate A, baud rate B, SIO2, SIO1. You can see they go to different places. Okay. So the way that the Z80 works is um, it has 64K of memory, but that can be memory mapped. So we have 64K of memory here. Um, there is a latch here to latch the data in and out. Um, this is a special chip. So there are two custom chips in the uh, K-Pro. Uh, it's custom ASIC. So this is, this one does the refresh of the RAM. So that's a part you can no longer buy. If you're, if that's dead, you're, 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 you're also dead. You're out of luck. And then there's one over, uh, over here in the video section. This one is a bunch of timing for the video section. So there's two custom chips. All right. So we've got the custom chip here. We also have a ROM that has the boot ROM. It's a 64K uh, boot ROM. And it, it's turned on at power up and you can also use it from time to time. And whether or not you're talking to this chip has to do with some chip selects that happen inside this custom ASIC. There's something called PROM chip enable. And when certain conditions are true, uh, there's a bank select switch here that comes from the uh, uh, comes from things. So there's a, there's a bank and you can have bank, a bank of memory or bank of ROM and you can switch between the two. All right. Cause this chip is used along the way. Uh, the, um, uh, CPM relies on calls from this to talk to things like the floppy disks and things. All right. And then, uh, over here, we've got the video generation. This is the video controller, a 6845 does all of the video stuff. There's some, like I said, glue logic here in this custom chip, but we have uh, basically one uh, 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 programmable ROM right here at 2732. That programmable ROM has the characters in it. There's also character attributes like highlight and underline and things like that. That's done it done in a static RAM chip here, a 6116 RAM chip. And uh, that has to do with the attributes, whether um, whether we have certain things on or off. All right. Um, let's see here. Um, so the way this works is, uh, you write a page of memory into this chip, the 6116. Yeah, I, I misspoke a little bit. The 6116 holds the actual page of video. Um, and then uh, that gets clocked through a character generation. And also so, uh, the attribute ROM is applied to it here. So there's another 6116 down here that has the attributes on it. Like I said, underline and things like that. So, so this plus this combined to make a character and then they get clocked through the character generation and they go out. The video is very, very simple. It's just high or low. Um, it's, a, it's an on or off pixel. There's no color in the system. So it's just high or low as a vertical sync and a horizontal sync. So that's all there is to the video. All right, as part of the video controller, uh, there's some timing here. If you get one of these schematics, it is wrong. <laughs> okay, it is wrong. You, this section right here, this U75 seems to have a cross out on it. And then there was some other things uh, that were uh, uh, drawn in and th that's in incorrect. I put in the correct thing here. Um, if you use, if you use these drawings, these drawings are correct. This one was incorrect. So I had to add this, this little, uh, divider here, um, and, um, uh, an LS 157 is, uh, kind of a chip select, uh, a multiplexer type chip. And, uh, 
with this flip-flop and that multiplexer chip, it flops back. Anyway, it's necessary. <laughs> that has to be in there. All right, uh, let's go way over here. Here's the floppy disk controller. And uh, it talks to the floppy disk. That's all of that stuff does there. If you do have a hard drive, it's these two chips for in and out. 8-bit uh, in, 8-bit out. Um, the serial chips are the SIO chips. Um, they are, what part number are those? I forget now. They're not marked on here. Um, uh, doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, they are dual serial ports. So each chip has two serial ports. This one is, the keyboard uses one part of it, and then the serial data connector uses the other part. Over here we have, uh, the uh, serial printer, uh, uh, on the back uh, is uses half of it and then the other half of it is being used by the modem. Okay, so the modems right here. This is an RJ6 connect, RJ11, RJ11 I think, connector on the back, hook up your phone line to. Comes in here to an impede smashing transformer. It also has a ring detection circuit, so if a bunch of voltage comes in here, it turns on this um, optocoupler and tells the circuit, hey, you've got a ring condition, and then there's a relay here that you can connect the modem to the uh, to the phone line. Uh, there's also a touch tone dialer, dee 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 dee, that's what that one is. This is the modem, this is just a dialer. Those are controlled by a PIO. A uh, PIO uh, has uh, some lines here. Uh, half of the PIO is used for the modem, the other half of the PIO is used for the real-time the real-time clock. Um, let's see here. Uh, this is a 32 kilohertz crystal for the real-time clock and battery backup is over here. Uh, Centronics port is just eight bits in and out. And then, like I said, a little bit of extra for the, uh, for the floppy disk. So it is a pretty cool circuit. Um, it is a bit unusual. Uh, because of the two custom chips, the uh, uh, DRAM uh, refresh chip, and then some bunch of glue logic for the video. Uh, so they did uh, spend some time and figured out it was cost effective to build some custom chips and reduce the chip count and make the board smaller. And anyway, there you go. This is the uh, universal card for the uh, for the K Pros, um, the 2X, the 4, the 484, the 10, the Robbie, um, all use the same card.